What's going on, everybody? It's Jeff Grammer with the Albuquerque Journal, and this is the Talking Grammar Podcast. We're on episode 84 now of this podca- podcast. Glad you're here. Glad you're watching, listening. Um, whichever you're doing, I'm, I'm glad we're talking Lobo Hoops again, and the Mountain West Tournament is over. And it's been 10 years since uh, they've been in the NCAA Tournament, but they are indeed, as I record this on March 18th, they are indeed preparing uh, for the NCAA Tournament. And it's been a long time coming for a lot of Lobo fans and and for the program in general. They, of course, won the Mountain West Tournament four games, became the first team ever to win four games in four days last week in Las Vegas, and uh, punched their ticket to the NCAA Tournament. And um, before I get into a little bit more of that and what today's episode is about, I want to make sure to send a shout out to TLC Plumbing, Heating, Cooling, and Electrical for presenting this episode of the Talking Grammar Podcast. It's uh, people like them that are helping us get you not only this content, but just all the content we're trying to bring you about college basketball, high school sports, all the all the sports content we're bringing you, uh, not only the Albuquerque Journal, but the Albuquerque Journal Podcast Network. So much appreciation to TLC Plumbing, Heating, Cooling, Electrical for uh, for being a part of this um, podcast. Uh, the Lobos, as I said, won four First team ever to win four games in four days last week at the Mountain West Tournament. Jalen House just put on a show, and it it was fun. It was fun to watch. Uh, The the Mountain West had a historic year. It was the best year. in the. It's the 25th anniversary of the Mountain West Conference, and this was the best in the 25-year history, and they get six teams in the NCAA Tournament. That said, the overriding reaction of Mountain West fans across the country, across the West, is, uh, is is disappointment. Not that not only did they get six teams in, which which they had never done before. That's more than the ACC, more than the Pac-12, more than the Big East. But the the selection committee seated them in a way that that looked disrespectful in a historic year. Had never gotten more than five teams in, and they had only done that once. So one year of five teams in the tournament, and then all of a sudden they're getting six teams in this year, and yet they're still a kind of a uh, residual sort of feeling of um, just just disappointment, like uh, disrespect. So um, the UNM Lobos, uh, based on their seeding by the NCAA Selection Committee, would not have even been in the tournament had they not won those four games in four days. Colorado State, which thought they were an eight seed, maybe a nine seed, they slipped down to the 10 seed as a play-in game, and they wouldn't have been in had one other team maybe snuck in and, and passed them. They were the last at-large team in. Boise State, had hopes of maybe as high as a seven seed, probably an eight seed. They slipped down to ten, and they're playing in the playing game on Wednesday. So um, Nevada, which also had a very good resume, is the other ten seed. They're not in the playing round at least, but uh, they they are a ten seed. Utah State wins a league with six NCAA tournament teams. They win the league outright, and they're an eight seed. And then San Diego State. Um, Good non-conference for San Diego State, and they had a history last year, obviously, of, of making it to the national title game. They are a five seed, but overall, the Mountain West, a little frustrated with their seeding. Um, what I do in this episode is is I joined Rob Douster and Jeff Goodman earlier today for their show, the, um, the Field of 68, their YouTube channel, The Field of 68, which is great, by the way. You should subscribe to some great college basketball content, and they do such Great work every single day during the NCAA tournament. You're, you're going to enjoy it over the next few weeks if you subscribe to their YouTube channel and all their social media channels. Um, but I joined them on their weekly Mountain West Insider podcast. We're going to double up on that. We did this at the beginning of the season once. Uh, we're doing it again today. Where uh, me joining them on that podcast, I'm just going to kind of repurpose it and run it here. And what we do is we preview all the, the Mountain West teams in the NCAA tournament and their first-round opponents. So, I guess without further ado, I, I do hope you join us in, in, in the Albuquerque Journal and our coverage of the, of the NCAA tournament. And I know last week our high school crew, James Yotis and crew, just absolutely hit it out of the park with all their state basketball tournament coverage. Um, we got a lot, some good help with photographer Mike Sandoval. Um, at the NCAA tournament, I mean, at the Mountain West tournament, rather, and Ken Sickinger and I were both out there, and, and I'm glad that you guys seem to enjoy it. I know the numbers were great. Uh, thousands of, of Albuquerque and, and thousands of UNM Lobo fans were out in Las Vegas again, and it was, it was a party, and obviously the interest is there. So uh, I appreciate it. Again, you could help support all our coverage 
to help support local journalism by subscribing to the Albuquerque Journal, print or digital, or both, and that's at abqjournal.com slash subscribe, where you can get information on how you can support local journalism and subscribe to the Albuquerque Journal. So, without further ado, let's get to this episode of the Talking Grammar Podcast, which is an NCAA tournament preview for the six Mountain West teams that are in the big dance. Welcome back to another episode of the Mountain West Insider Podcast, and we have a lot to get to today because we have a bracket, ladies and gentlemen. The tournament is here, and there are six Mountain West teams that are going to be playing in the tournament, although the seedings of these six teams are not exactly what uh, we expected coming in. I'll roll through it real quick. We have San Diego State is a five seed in the East. They will be playing UAB. Mountain West champion Utah State is an eight seed in the Midwest. They are going to be playing TCU. New Mexico, who won the Mountain West tournament, is an 11 seed in the West. They are going to get Clemson in the first round of the tournament. Boise State is in a playing game, playing Colorado in the South. Colorado State is in a playing game, playing Virginia in the Midwest. And Nevada is a 10 seed playing Dayton also in the West. We could end up with a New Mexico, Nevada, uh, Sweet 16 matchup out West. If it all works out, Grammar, Jeff, Grammar, Jeff Goodman. I am loaded up with Jeff's on today's show. Grammar, I'm going to go to you first on this one. First reaction, seeing the bracket and seeing where some of these teams are seated. Uh, kind of mixed reactions. I think if you're the Mountain West, right They're 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 hashtag work. They're six bid Mountain West. Most the league has ever gotten. Um, in fact, they've only gotten five one other time. Uh, so mostly this is a league that's gotten between one bid, an auto bid and uh, four bids for 25 years. And this is the 25th anniversary. So on the one hand, look, they got six in. It's hard to deny that that's a great season when only two conferences have more bids than you and you outdo the Pac-12, you outdo the ACC, you'd outdo the Big East. So there's that. Um, and they don't want to take away from that. Like that, that's historic for this league. Then you see Boise State was the first one that rolled around as a 10 seed, and you're starting to think, wow, did Colorado State not even make it? What, what, what's going on if Boise State, who thought they were going to get as good as a 7, comes in as a 10? Um, the, the, seating, the seating is really a mixed message kind of, uh, kind of thing because a lot of the other seeds from, from power conferences, frankly, you look at an Iowa State and, and where they were seated, and the explanation given for it was, um, they didn't seem to care about their non-conference. They said that they got so many quad one wins within their conference, but look how many quad one wins they got. But when it came to the Mountain West seeding, the chair basically said, well, a lot of those quad ones wins they got were just against each other. But that's what good conferences do. You, If you have a system in place that is built on, like it or not, and, and there's going to be revamping of the net to do, we know that. And we'll, I'm sure that'll get into that a little bit. But if the system in place is to build up your net as best you can in whatever way you can in the formula given, and then you beat up on each other, I don't think you just then kind of dis, you know, not even recount or just disregard the beating up of each other because they're all quad one games. And it was it was really weird to me that, um, you know, you look at a New Mexico that they were called the bid stealer, and and they won four games in four days. They they. They finished their season winning four in a row, including they, they four were a bid stealer at the end. They were, we yep. didn't know it, but they really were. And and for them to be a bid stealer when they entered that tournament, the Mountain West tournament, thinking they needed one more good win, we we know what the Air Force loss did. It, it knocked them out on the outside, looking looking in. But you know, Richard Pertino and, and the whole team thought one good win, and we're in. Let's get two to, to to be safe. Well, they got three of them and still wouldn't have been in had they not. So um, a little confusing based on all the numbers the committee says they go by. The the Mountain West did what they were supposed to do to get five, six teams in comfortably. And, and they didn't get them in comfortably, but they did get them in. So, like I said, kind of a mixed message sort of day for the Mountain West. Goodman? Yeah, I, I mean, I think Jeff put it well. I think Jeff put it well because we were all, like, pissed off, right? I know I was seeing the different – you know, Boise especially, right? I mean, really, both both Boise and Colorado State get yeah. playing piss me off. As much as the seedings being off, I just feel like both of them getting a play in was wrong. That's wrong to do. You want to hit one of them with a play in, that's fine, uh, but not both. Boise didn't deserve a play in, in my opinion, but they struggled in the non conference. So I'm with you, Grammar. Like 
I'm happy they got six, uh, but I wish Boise hadn't gotten the play. I would have felt better. Yeah. It, I, I was going to throw think... one other. Go ahead. Throw one, one other quick thing. I think Nevada's resume overall. I know they lost last week because they had an injured Hunter McIntosh who's become a really key part. I thought Nevada's resume was really good too. So I don't know. They're in a ten. Yeah. You know what's funny? Dayton has a re- resume of a ten. Nevada has a resume of a seven, and they play each other in the first round. So you know. Yeah. Could have been worse. Could have gotten a worse draw. I'm with you guys on the playing game stuff. Um, I will just say with uh with all of those bid stealers, you have North Carolina State, you have Duquesne, you have uh Oregon, and you have UAB who are all on like the eleven and twelve line, and they would not normally be on the eleven or twelve line in a normal bracket. That's normally where Boise State would be. So getting all that it's it's a weird bracket this year with all the bid thieves. So I do sympathize with the committee a little bit there, but Boise State was definitely too low. Um, who let's let's kind of go through these matchups real quick in the first round. We got Boise State and Colorado. Uh, that is brutal for Boise State, Jeff. Uh, well, Jeff Goodman. Um, Colorado is one of the more talented teams in college basketball. That's a really really difficult playing game matchup. I can see Colorado getting all the way to the Sweet Sixteen. That would not so shock me. It's funny, too. I don't know how many people know this. I'm sure Grammar does. But um, Ty Boyle's like a part of that that Mark Few kind of group, right? They're all tight. Leon, obviously, Fewey, Munson, Tad Boyle, all those guys. So this is this is a matchup amongst two really good friends here as well. And, yeah, a brutal matchup for Leon. Like, again, you couldn't have been more screwed to me by the committee than Leon Rice. Like, you cannot be more screwed. You get to play in and you play a Colorado team that, honestly, they're top three players you could put up against just about anybody in the country. Really. I mean, think about it. Like, Cody Williams, when he's healthy, has been a, one of the top freshmen in the country. Obviously, you know, K.J. Simpson's been, you know, probably one of the top ten point guards in the country this year. And Tristan De Silva is a man. Like, he just does everything. He's a versatile, you know, tough matchup for a forward. So, like, man, like, I cannot believe how Leon got hosed. And you could see it by his reaction. Like, you mm-hmm. could see it last night. Like, oh, my God, what the hell just happened? Yep. I don't know if there's been a better reaction on that that side of it, right? There's been some great reactions on Selection That's... Sunday and a lot of celebration. But, man, that Boise State reaction was – it was telling, man. It, it was good. Yeah. Man. Um. All right, Virginia, Colorado State. I actually think that that's a pretty good matchup for – uh. For um, Colorado State in this spot, I don't think Virginia's very good at all. They're yeah, not. I think I think Isaiah Stevens. I mean, uh, well, Isaiah Stevens. It didn't matter who the matchup didn't matter for Isaiah Stevens. He he he's a he's an elite point guard. He was going to do good. I think uh, I think though, if you're going up against a defense like that, having an Isaiah Stevens is it gives you it gives you every chance you need to take away what Virginia is, and Virginia is still defense and not much else. Yeah, the only thing I'd say in that one is uh, Reese Speakman's probably one of the best defensive guards in the country. Now, I don't know if he could stay in front of Isaiah Stevens. Like, I still think, you know, even when I when I was there, when I was sitting next to Grammar for the uh, the New Mexico Colorado State game, I was just looking over at him. I'm like, some of the plays that that dude makes, like to do it justice, you have to see him in person because it's like a video game sometimes. So, as good as Beekman is, and he's elite defensively. Um, I don't know if he could stay in front of Isaiah Stevens. And, and this, to me, is one of those games that Isaiah Stevens, it, it, you know, look, he can put up 20 in a game. I just think if he sets everybody up um, as well as he can set everybody up, I think this is one of those games that Isaiah Stevens can look like that classic point guard and and really just lead them with, with about seven or eight points, probably all at the free throw line, and, uh, you know, a good six or seven assists somehow because – you know, assists are hard to come by against that defense, and I, I do think that uh, Isaiah Stevens isn't going to get shut out in the assist column. Yeah, and the way to beat Virginia is to be able to – they want you to try to shoot tough jump shots, right? Um, and when they play those, like, hard hedge on ball screens, they make you the point guard dribble around. Isaiah Stevens is one of the best in the country at picking out shooters on the weak side of the floor. So I like that match for Colorado State. If we get a Max Acemas, Isaiah Stevens uh, first-round matchup, I would not be complaining about seeing those two go uh, go head to head. Um, let's start next with um, with San Diego State against UAB because if San Diego State wins uh, and gets to the Sweet Sixteen, they'll get a chance to play UConn again, most likely. 
Um, what do you like here, Brammer? UAB to me feels like uh, a team that's going to try to do the same stuff as San Diego State does, and I don't think that you can beat San Diego State at San Diego State's game. Uh, yeah, I would agree with that. I think San Diego State is a a team that, even though they made it to the the Mountain West Championship, and and certainly once you get there, you want to win it. They weren't looking at this past week as their season. You know, um, they're they they they've been looking at this for a little while. So, um, I I think Lamont Butler. People can say he had a disappointing year because so much was expected out of you know a shot or two that he hit last year. One being an all timer. Um, I I just think that Lamont Butler is actually playing really really well right now. I think that um, Jaden Ladee has if, if he worked himself out in any way of All America kind of conversation or being a top fifteen to twenty ish player at worst. Um, I think he worked his, his way back into that. And uh, I just I there's too much firepower for San Diego State and they are playing pretty good defense again. Um, I, I just I think San Diego State's a team that was been building for this for a little while. And I kind of actually like their draw a little bit to maybe get back to the second weekend. Goodman. Yeah, I mean, listen, I think San Diego State ends up playing UConn in the Sweet 16. I really do. I like both matchups for them. Uh, UAB, you know, got in an AAC that was honestly mediocre. And, and we saw Florida Atlantic fall by the wayside at the end of the tournament. Um, you know, and then you look at it, what do they get? Auburn next? Probably. Auburn yeah. or Yale. Right. Right. I mean, those are two good matchups because, you know, the one thing I think I worry about with San Diego State, like their guards, their guards aren't like imposing. Um, but Auburn's guards, you know, Rob and I went down there and saw them a few weeks ago in person. And it's like, all right, those dudes can't really get by anybody. They don't so I, I actually really like the matchup there. I think San Diego State gets back to the Sweet 16. I really do. Yeah, I'm with you there as well. Um, I, I think that they got a pretty good draw. And, and uh, one thing that we've seen them be able to do is uh, win in tournament settings. I want to go to New Mexico yet ne next. Because I, I I think that this New Mexico-Clemson game is one of the most interesting ones in the first round. To me, it's uh, grammar. The, the Clemson backcourt, um, Joe Girard and Chase Hunter, I don't know how well they'll deal with some of the ball pressure that you get out of a guy like a Jalen House, right? Uh, but I don't know how well New Mexico is going to do with a dude that's built like a six foot nine superhero in PJ Hall, who's a fifth year senior. What do you see here? I would say that the um, the PJ Hall part of it is is they actually did pretty well against the bigs in the Mountain West this year with Jaden D you know different I, I get it but like they, they did okay with bigs they do have a freshman in, in JT Toppin who is a very good defensive freshman um I do think Nelly Jr. Joseph has kind of quietly probably been maybe the best center there's not a whole lot of real centers in the Mountain West um but he might have quietly become maybe the better or the best center in, in the league towards the end there mm -hmm. and um I, I think those two guys actually defensively um, might be able to at least slow enough uh, out of PJ that um, out of PJ Hall that I think the the guards if the guards do anything like they did this past week and and that includes um, a healthy Donovan Dent he was sick for the championship game um, I, I can tell you guys a story about Donovan that was uh, he, he was legitimately sick and um, when the when the locker rooms open up afterwards you know and media goes into the locker rooms after a championship game in these tournament settings. He had nowhere to go to be sick. So he's walking around the stadium at Thomas and Mack Center, around the corner, more people, more people. By the time the celebrations were over and the arena was actually the emptiest part, he walked from the locker room and was looking for a place, went out to the arena and off to the side and found a trash can. He is in the arena throwing up while everybody's in the media room nice. doing their post-game celebrations. Um, they did that against San Diego State without Donovan Dent. Basically, he played 12 minutes. But um, if he, assuming he's better, I think Donovan Dent kind of uh, it has in his mind. Yeah, I like these teammates. He gets along fine with Jalen House. He gets along fine with Jamal Mashburn Jr. But he wants to remind people, like, wait a minute, like th this was supposed to be my stage a little bit. And I think Donovan Dent is going to have a great game. If if he does, they'll be in good shape because yeah. I don't think they can slow down PJ Hall. I, I really don't. I don't. I don't think. I think so. Nelly has any shot, and I think a freshman in JT Toppin, no matter how good he's been this year defensively, he's going to struggle. I mean, the only thing PJ Hall hasn't done is make clutch free throws down the stretch, and that will scare me if it's a close game because he's missed a lot of big ones uh, down the stretch. But you know, they got veteran guard too, and Joe Girard. 
this is going to be as good of a first round matchup as there is in the NCAA tournament. There's a lot of them you look at and you're like, eh, I don't know. I don't really give the up. And they'll, they'll be upsets because there always are. This is one that on paper, you look at it and you're like, uh, throw the seedings out the window. This is like a 50, 50 matchup. Uh, I do think if Donovan Dent plays well, you know, listen, if New Mexico's guards play like they should, they got three dudes that not a lot of people can match up with. And then, you know, JT was terrible when I saw him, but he's been so good this year. If yeah. New Mexico can play firing at all cylinders, they're actually the better team. The yeah, I, I agree. I agree with that. I, I, I agree with that. And here's the biggest thing is that uh, I don't – you're right about the whole um, – the whole PJ Hall, JT Toppin uh, matchup. I don't know if Clemson can deal with New Mexico's guards. Like, I think it's vice versa. I think New Mexico has the better guards and they are really good defensively. Uh, let's go to the other team that's going to be in the West region. We have Dayton and Nevada. Um, I also really like this matchup for Nevada, Jeff. Uh, Jeff Goodman. We'll go to Goodman first on this one. Go to, um, go to Grammar first. I want to hear him first. Well, uh, I think it comes down to whether or not Hunter McIntosh is crazy. It sounds for people that might look at a stat sheet and see this guy didn't even start most of the season. I think, you know, he had six for six, I think it was, in their win at Boise State. Um, if they add another guard that can kind of create problems, I think Nevada's really good. Um, Jared Lucas, though, he's a guy that I think people are going to kind of be reintroduced to in this tournament that uh, is very good, and Keenan Blackshear creates all kinds of problems as a, a huge point guard. So I just think the guards of, of Nevada are really good. Nick Davidson obviously came came on late, but uh, I think the guard play at Nevada and Hunter McIntosh kind of spreading, opening things up with his outside shot is a, is a real key to this. I just don't know. He didn't even make the trip to Las Vegas for the tournament. They only played one game, so it didn't really matter that much, but he didn't even travel like he was going to play. So I don't know. Uh, I think it kind of comes down a little bit to whether or not his health is uh, is okay. It's funny you say that. I was literally just on a doing a, a, a episode of the DTF podcast with Fanta and To, and their answer about whether who's going to win that game was well. To was like, well, it depends on whether or not Hunter McIntosh plays, and I was like, hmm, <laughs> Hunter McIntosh. But yeah, uh, Goodman, his last four games before the UNLV game, eighteen points at San Jose State, fourteen points at Colorado State, twelve points at home against Fresno, and then twenty six on nine for eleven shooting and six for six from three. Uh, at Boise State. So uh, he's shooting it like a young Rob Doster um, right now. Dayton, any chance? What do you got? You like him? Uh, I think this is a, you know, this is your typical 7-10 matchup, right? I mean, Dayton's done a great job. Uh, they lost their starting point guard right before the start of the season. Mm -hmm. Malachi Smith, Anthony Grant's done a tremendous job kind of filling that hole. Um, I don't know. I, honestly, I don't have a great feel for this one. This is one of those that you kind of look at and you're like, it's a toss up game. It's a toss up game. I probably need to do a little more research. Well, I'll, I'll tell you this with, with Dayton. Um, I think a lot of it, they're, they're in a similar situation where Javon Bennett's been banged up and has missed some time recently. So uh, his health kind of determines it the same way that Hunter McIntosh's health kind of determines it. Um, I, I like Nevada in the spot. I feel like we're picking a lot of mountain West teams here, but I really like Nevada. Uh, I'm, I'm pulling for the mountain West team. That's, that's the crazy part. Okay. We've been on the league the whole year. Right, we've been on the league. We've said how much fun it is. Um, I'm also a huge fan of the commissioner, by the way. I think she's my favorite commissioner in in all of sports. I really do. I believe that. Like she's fun. She she's younger. You can have fun with her. You can you know, um, you know she she's she's she more. Gets it. Yeah, she's just I don't know. It's just it's not like talking to to a commissioner. That that's what I would say. Like some of them, not all of them. But some of them, it's like talking to a commissioner. For her, I feel like I'm talking to like a, a you know coach or something because she did. She, you know, she played at UMass, um, and uh, we had fun on the pod last week. Was that it? It was only last week. That's crazy. Um, so we've been rooting for this league all year. So I just find myself, especially now, where they don't have great seeds, and most of them are going to be underdogs for the most part. I would love to see like three of the, the six somehow make it to the second weekend. That would be a blast for me. And and kind of, and I told you so as well, because I've been out there saying like, these teams are good enough because the gap isn't what it used to be. While again, there's some great teams out there. 
I don't think the gap between some of these teams is nearly as significant. And while I'm picking a lot of, not chalk, but a lot of the favorites to go to the Final Four, like, I still don't feel good about it. Right. Yep. Last one, first round, Utah State, TCU. Mountain West champion Grammar going up against a TCU team that a lot of people thought would end up closer to the bubble than they did. You think Danny Sprinkle is going to be a little bit angry about this? Yeah, I, I do. Um, there, there's, I feel bad a little bit too, kind of covering this league as long as I have seeing this season, um, be as good as it was and seeing an outright champion, um, and, and still sort of kind of being in a position where I sort of doubt them a little bit. I, I don't know if Utah state is, is going to be able to beat TCU. Uh, I, I will tell you this at every turn, every time I doubted TCU and I picked them ninth in the preseason, I mean, uh, Utah state and I picked them ninth in the preseason. Um, the, they stepped up and won the game they were supposed to, they did enough that they were supposed to. Um, I don't know that they looked very good in the, in the tournament this past week. They went to overtime with Fresno state. Uh, I don't know if I wouldn't say that they're out of gas necessarily, but I, I, I think maybe the magics run out a little bit. And, and like I said, every time I thought that, you know, all they did was go outright win a, a, a conference that got six teams into this tournament. So um, I, I'm siding with T. I think TCU is going to be a little too much for him here. But Greg Osobar is is so much – he's so more – he's so much more skilled than I think you – you just look at him and say, okay, he's one of those centers. He's a big guy. He looks he looks out of shape. He He's, he's going to be one of those lumbering centers. The the guy is a very skilled big yes. man and just doesn't yes. look the part. And uh, they they can play outside in, and I or inside out. And and I just think that they are a very underrated team. But I do think it probably is going to be tough to to overcome uh, a good Big Twelve team right now. Yeah, I'm I'm not a huge fan of TCU, but I I feel like Danny Sprinkle's gotten everything he could out of this team. And I wonder if, like Grammar said, I, I wonder if they're a little bit out of gas here and. I don't know. I mean, again, listen, I'm pulling for Utah State more than probably any other team. Uh, just because, again, being out there go from, you know, Montana State and be this good at Utah State and win the regular season title, it's one of the best stories uh, in college basketball. I didn't know Danny Sprinkle super, super well. Like, I knew him. He reminded me. We met like 20 years ago at a prep school event that I ran. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I forgot. Uh, but Sprinkle to me is is a rising star at 47 years old to call somebody a rising star sounds bananas. Uh, but he's done that good of a job and being around him for those couple of days that I was out there. He just blew me away because, again, I think he's got that special gift that not a lot of coaches have. The Bill Self, Tom Izzo's of the world that can put their arm around a guy after completely MFing him. And there aren't many like that anymore. Yep. Uh, two two things to note in this matchup. One is that TCU is very good at forcing turnovers, so I think a lot of pressure is going to be on Darius Brown to not throw the ball all over the gym and be able to actually get them into Utah State to be able to run offense. And two, uh, Utah State doesn't really have much in the way of rim protection, um, and TCU is a team that is going to put the ball on the floor and try to get to the bucket, try to get to the offensive glass, try to score in the lane and score in the paint. Um, more than 55% of their scoring comes from a uh, two-point field goal range. So uh, that is something that you're going to have to keep an eye on. Um, if Utah State can kind of control the paint and win that battle, they'll have a very good chance to win. If not, then TCU is going to find a way to win that game. All right, last thing we're going to do before we get out of here, you got to pick one Mountain West team, that's at least one, but you got to give me the one that you feel the most comfortable about uh, being in the tournament still when we talk again next Monday Heading into the second so weekend, easy. Goodman. So, easy. so easy. Oh. not, but you can't say San Diego State. All right. Well, you didn't say you that. Can't say San Diego oh, State. I changed it. I changed it. You can't say San Diego State. All right. So they got to win two, or in Boise and Colorado State's got to win three. Win three. Boy, man. Um, I don't see Utah State if they get by TCU getting by Purdue. <laughs> yeah, that's tough. <laughs> that's a tough. Here's one, what man. I'll go with. Hey, congratulations on winning the Mountain West, one of the most entertaining conferences in America. <laughs> if you could beat this team from the Big Twelve, you get to go up against Zach Eady, the two-time right. National Player of the Year. Congratulations. I'll go. I'm going to go Nevada. You know why? Because I, I think they can beat Dayton. Like I said, I think it's a toss-up game. 
And then my alma mater under Tommy Lloyd has not exactly killed it the last couple of years in the tournament. So I will say Nevada. How about that? Ooh. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I mean, I kind of like your thinking that it's going to be one of those two. You know, if if by chance New Mexico and, and Nevada play in the Sweet 16, I can't tell you how Al Albuquerque will break. Um, New Mexico <laughs> will be in the Sweet 16. They've played in the round of 16 before the tournament ever expanded and – they, they've never been in the Sweet 16, and that's all they talk about in Lobo basketball. Alford was the guy that was supposed to get into the Sweet 16, and then he left. A lot of broken hearts here. And if they face Steve Alford in the Sweet 16, yeah, I, I just – Do they I'm hate probably, him? Do they hate him? Uh, not everybody, but the general in, – in this situation, they would yeah. – yes, there would be a lot of uh, that guy. Yes, they, they would hate him this week and next week. Um, that game, by the way, you know where it would get played? Los Angeles. That's right. Where he left New Mexico for UCLA. I think a lot of people. How far is that Albuquerque to LA? It can't be that far. Um, probably about 10, 12 hours. I'm thinking. Doster has no feel. What? He has no. idea. He thinks like honestly. He thinks New Mexico is like two hours from LA. Phoenix well, is like an hour and a half. Like, well, yeah, why did where? No, I, that is absolutely. I wanted to know if it was it was drivable. I wanted to yeah. know. For New Mexicans, it would be if it was yeah. in. It could be in Boston, and New Mexicans would drive to that one. <laughs> Twelve hours for me, no <laughs> chance, zero. Um. So who are you going with? You got to pick one, Grammar. Yeah, if I got to pick one, I, you know what? Oh man, I don't like their matchups. I really like the way Boise's been playing. You know what? I I don't want to sound like a homer. Um. I think. You pick New Mexico think, State. They're not even in the tournament grammar. Come on. I think New Mexico State Aggies have a no. Uh, <laughs> you know what? I, I'm gonna. I think Leon and, and Boise State got so screwed that maybe I'm trying to see who their second round is. Um, it, that was so. For the record, this is my pick. Yeah, the Boise is. Yeah, yeah. I'm going with Boise. Gonna be pissed off. Yeah, yeah. You well, know what? I, part I, I of the really reason I'm going with Boise is because I thought that you were going to take New Mexico. So if you're going to take Boise, then I'll go with New Mexico. But I think, like, look, Boise can beat Colorado. I'm not Colorado's got talent. They haven't done anything all this year that that, that has me that impressed. Uh, Florida just lost their starting center to the yeah. that the broken leg. I like was, that one. Yeah, and then Marquette. Uh, look, you're. Boise State is a really tough team, and we don't know what Tyler Kolek's actual status is. Like, we know what they're telling us. We know what we hear. I know, you know what Shaka said of the Big East Tournament. I'm, by the way, I was just on with uh, David Chow. Do you know who David Chow is? The sports uh, – the pro football doc or whatever his name is. He had me on his pod. He, he broke down all of the injury, uh, what he thought, of Hunter Dickinson, McCuller, Kolek. It was actually pretty interesting. I told him to send me the clips. And uh, he felt like Kolick would be would be close to 100. percent Yeah. Well, the, I again, it's I, I tend to agree, and I think that's why they held him out. But um, I don't know. You just don't know. And I think Boise State is tough and physical enough that they could uh, they could win that game even with a healthy Kolick. Um, I like New Mexico too, though. I'll, you know, I'm going Boise. State. I like every team in the Mountain West. Who am I? Who, who are we kidding? We're gonna have six in the second weekend. Right? I'm rooting for them all. I got to say, I catch myself rooting for them all uh, because, frankly, I want to do the podcast again next year. I want to get out to some <laughs> other venues next year that I didn't get out to. I mean, I usually <laughs> – Viejas, I, I, I can't believe I haven't been out there in a couple of years because, uh, frankly, you know, I want to get the hell out of Boston uh, every winter and get to Viejas. Cause, but this year, man, grammar – like, I got to say, my trip going out there – and I told the commissioner this, I told Gloria this, but like that that trip was as good a trip as I've had in years going to Logan yeah. and Albuquerque. It was it wasn't it, just because I saw you. Um, oh, well, but never mind then. But that definitely added to it. I mean, sitting next to you and soaking up the knowledge that I did for that game, like honestly, you got the attorney Rudy sitting a couple rows yeah, behind me who, who will nuts. help you with the parking ticket while also knowing every referee in the country's name and reminding them how horrible they are. You got Snake down the way painting up his face. Uh, yeah. Snake got married night. this year, guys. He had, his wife paints his face for him. Great it's, name, uh, great game too. At the end, I mean, yeah, I you know that wasn't one of the best pick games this year though. Like overall, it was kind of a sluggish. That's what I told people. That's yeah. what I said. They were like, "Well, how great was the atmosphere?" I'm like. 
It was good. It wasn't a 10. It was not yeah. a 10. But again, it was a late night weekday game. Um, but man, the end of that game, like, I'm not sure I'm going to get a better minute of basketball, right? You and I, have you seen a better minute of basketball back and forth shot making than we saw that night? Man, the, well, Nevada, New Mexico, and Reno kind of did it. So I've had a couple that New Mexico was a part of, but it was a no. That was as good as it was, and and for Donovan Dent to finish it the way he did was was pretty spectacular. Yep. So right, I'm the, going. I am going to go Boise State. I'm going to avoid the just for the record. I'll avoid the homer pick. But I'll tell you what, Jalen House put this team on his back this past week, and he uh, and his dad. I interviewed his dad and. I didn't even get out my full question with Eddie House after in the celebration. I said, hey, Jalen's been under your shadow a lot. And he stopped me right there, said, he's not under anybody's shadow. His name is Jalen motherfucking House. And, uh, <laughs> Did you see he, the uh, video of him? By the way, it was my favorite clip from championship week. Did you see the video of him? Fantastic. That Who is that? Yeah, my, that's man, my mother man, effing son. son. That's my mother effing boy. I was like, yes, I Eddie. Put, I attached that know. video to a Rick Patino tweet when Rick Patino was saying how proud he was of Richard. Yeah. Said, these, these dads are exactly the same. Eddie House <laughs> and Rick Patino, just proud of their sons. <laughs> Listen, this has been fun. Grammar, it's always good to see you. Goodman, it's never good to see you. Uh, this was the Mountain West Insider podcast and. You know, if all goes well, we will have another one previewing hopefully at least one, maybe more, maybe two, maybe three, maybe all six, uh, six sweet 16 Mountain West. Is that what the new hashtag is going to end up being? Uh, well, either way, no matter what happens, we'll be back again next week with the Mountain West Insider Podcast, breaking down everything that you need to know about this league and the NCAA tournament. For Jeff Grammer, for Jeff Goodman, my name is Rob Dahlstra, and we'll be back next week. All right, well, there you go. Hope you enjoyed that. That was a, a fun podcast I did with Jeff Goodman and Rob Doster uh, with Field of 68. So they uh, they put on a they have a really good product for college basketball fans. And hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully you enjoy all the content they're putting out. Hopefully you enjoy all the podcasts we're putting out. Let me know what you think. Grammar, abqjournal.com is how you can get me on email. I'm always on social media, X in particular, at Jeff Grammar. And just let me know what you think. Let my bosses know what you think. Let uh, let everybody at the journal know what you think about these podcasts. We got a lot of them starting to roll out. A lot of them in their infancy, still kind of feeling feeling their way through some things. And um, but this is uh, this is definitely a new product that the uh, Albuquerque Journal Podcast Network is trying to bring to you guys. Not only the video format, which I know a lot of you guys enjoy, but there's there's an awful lot of you that still still go on a walk, a jog, a, a workout where you where you got the earbuds in and you just want to listen to it so however you're consuming these podcasts it's much appreciated and i do want to thank you for that again abqjournal.com slash subscribe is how you can support local journalism subscribe to the journal podcast or digitally or in print and then i also want to send a shout out one more one last time to tlc plumbing heating cooling and electrical for presenting this episode of the talking grammar podcast hope you guys enjoy march madness hope you guys enjoy the ncaa tournament and until next time, thanks for watching.